Stellantium PC has undergone a rebranding and here we are introducing Endorfi. Still designed in partnership with Synergy Cooling, the Polish company is aiming to maintain its goals of offering strong price versus performance cooling hardware. In this video, we are examining the Endorfi Navis F280, a 280mm all-in-one liquid cooler that aims to offer no-frills performance cooling at a competitive price of €98. Euros. We've already reviewed the Navis F240 ARGB in Silentium PC guys, so this review will be very similar indeed, but let's take a quick look at the cooler and then jump into the important 280mm cooling performance. Mounted hardware and accessories are provided for modern platforms such as LGA1700 and AM5. You get some cables for handling the fans and connections, plus there's a tube of Pactum PT3 thermal paste which I always like to see included. One pleasant surprise that impressed me was that Endorphi followed the tradition of pre-installing the fans and this just makes it a little bit easier for a user to install the cooler itself. Taking a closer look at the hardware, Endorphi uses a conventional 27 to 28 mm thick black aluminium radiator for the Navis F280. The black coloured liquid tubes are covered by a high quality attractive braid in and flexibility on the tubes is positive especially when coupled with the reasonable degree of movement for the entry points at the pump block unit. A well sized bare copper cold plate is used to extract heat from a CPU. Personally, I prefer that there's no pre-applied thermal paste on that copper cold plate, particularly because a tube of thermal paste is included, so this covers you for multiple applications. Physically very chunky, the pump block unit features integrated mounting hardware for the Intel and AMD platforms that this cooler supports. This is a unique design because most competitors use metal or otherwise brackets for compatibility with Intel and AMD platforms, but I guess this gives you one less part to worry about, so that's pretty good from a part amalgamation perspective. Of course, there is a downside though, because upgrading this cooler to fit a socket with different mounting holes, yeah, that's going to be perhaps impossible, if not difficult. PWM control is used for the ceramic bearing pump. This allows the unit to operate in a speed range of 1600 to 2600 RPM, which is ideal for noise output. There's no LED lighting at all on the pump block housing and that will certainly appeal to some users, I definitely know that point. However, the Endorphi brand logo cannot be rotated either, which is a little short-sighted from a design perspective in my opinion. The pair of Fluctus 140 PWM fans come pre-applied to the radiator through their rubber grommets. These fans are rated at a speed range of 250 to 1800 RPM via a 4-pin PWM connector. The two fans are daisy chained together on the radiator, meaning that only a single 4-pin header is required to power them both. That's pretty smart in my opinion. Endorphi uses a fluid dynamic bearing inside the fans, and there are clear optimization on the blades to suit the pressure biased use case in this radiator. Given the smart daisy chain of the pre-installed fan wires, cable management is very easy. There's just the pair of cables leaving the pump block unit, SATA power and 4-pin PWM control. And then the 4-pin fan cable can be hidden easily behind the motherboard tray without sprawling across the CPU socket area. As far as warranty goes, it's just okay at 3 years. Probably fine for a 98 euro cooler, but hardly astounding compared to the likes of what Arctic offer in this very price competitive market segment. The fans, however, they are rated at 100,000 hours MTBF, which is absolutely fine, so yeah. Installation of the Navis F280 was very easy indeed, and this is primarily thanks to Endorphi's pre-application of hardware, such as the fans and the integrated CPU cooler mounting brackets. All we needed to do was insert the threaded standoffs into the default AMD backplate, and then we applied thermal paste and positioned the pump block unit. Then once the springs and the thumb screws were tightened, the cooler was basically in place from the block perspective, so we just had to screw in the radiator into our chassis. As a side note, in the product documentation that we got sent by Endorphi, their logo on the pump block unit should be mounted facing up. They say this is for the optimal cooling performance. That didn't really work in our use case though because of the way that we test and we have to keep consistency with the orientation versus competing CPU coolers. Plus, I'm not a massive fan of that approach. I think a symmetrical or a user dictated approach is better because upright versus downwards 
they might fit different solutions, different people's hardware. So yeah, that's something to bear in mind. Testing is conducted on our usual long-term go-to AMD test system. This is running a Ryzen 9 5950X processor overclocked to 4.45 gigahertz at 1.312 volts or about 1.3 volts under operation. The motherboard tasked with handling about 210 plus watts of CPU package power is the awesome Gigabyte B550 Aorus Master with a really powerful VRM solution. Clean juice comes from a Seasonic TX1000 1 kilowatt power supply. We've got 32 gigs of memory and the graphics card is running in zero decibel passive mode so it doesn't interfere with the cooling. On the chassis front, it's a fractal design Meshify 2 with three 140 millimeter fans. Two as intake, one as exhaust. For testing, it's the same as always. We run a Cinebench R23 NT 30 minute loop and we look at the CPU steady state temperatures towards the end of that 30 minute period. The ambient is held between about 22 to about 25 degrees Celsius and where it varies significantly outside of this range we do add in extra tests to ensure the validity of the data. As always if you want more details on the test hardware, the test procedures and the comparison CPU coolers then make sure you check out first of all the main Kikuru website that really supports us too and then also our previous CPU cooler reviews and videos. Let's jump into the numbers. Let's start off with noise performance at 100% fan speed. This is important for getting an indication of where our performance expectations should lie based on noise output. Running at 49 dBA in our test system, noise output from the Endorphin Navis F280 is very much audible but about average when it comes to high-end liquid coolers. The noise output is slightly higher than the 240mm ARGB version of the Navis. It's promising that there's the strong 250 to 1800 RPM PWM fan curve because uh, this will further improve noise output if you want to tune it. That's very helpful, particularly if your motherboard has good control abilities. Full speed performance cooling on an overclocked Ryzen 9 5950X processor is very strong from Endorphi. The 280mm Navis F280 is a handful of degrees better than its 240mm ARGB sibling. And Endorphi's new dual 140mm cooler even manages to hang with the 360mm crowd quite comfortably. This is promising top-end cooling performance. We adjust each cooler's fan speeds until our 40 dBA noise output target is reached. In order to get the unit run at 40 dBA, we had to restrict the pair of fans down to 50% duty cycle. This translated into around 1130 RPM operating speed according to software readings. Cutting about half off the fan speeds to hit 40 dBA noise output is a heavy price to pay and indicates that the pair of Fluctus 140 PWM fans are not particularly noise efficient. Clearly, there is headroom to ramp up performance when needed, but 50% duty cycle is a considerable speed cut. When locked at 40 dBA noise output, the Endorphi Navis F280 still manages to maintain its healthy, highly competitive Ryzen 5000 based cooling performance. The 280mm cooler is once again a few degrees ahead of its 240mm sibling and it has a little problem hanging with some of the highly competitive 360mm cooler pack once again. With our Precision Boost Overdrive testing it's critical to note that small differences in the display delta temperature are not as important as the clock speed and cooling power achieved. Switching back to full fan speeds and with the processor running in PBO mode once again, we see very strong performance from the Endorphi Navis F280 that has it trade in blows with 360mm all-in-ones from the likes of Acertech. In fact, the Navis F280 manages a clock speed and power handling rating that is very close to the best showing on our chart. This is highly impressive performance. VRM cooling performance is perfectly fine for the dual 140mm Endorphi cooler. That's the case with the cooler run at 100% fan speed though the performance is less impressive when locked to 40 dBA noise output. I think it's fair to say that the Endorphi Navis F280 continues the Salentium PC tradition by offering really competitive CPU cooling performance at a very competitive and affordable price point. This is a very reasonably priced AO liquid cooler at less than 100 euros, yet the performance on offer is highly competitive against even 360mm liquid coolers that cost well over 50% more in many instances. Noise output is notable at full fan and pump speeds. With that said, it certainly isn't the most intrusive headache that we've listened to as far as CPU cooling goes, but the control abilities of the fans to run a speed curve range of 250 to 1800 RPM leaves plenty of tuning opportunity. 
While installation of the CPU cooler is very straightforward thanks to the pre-applied fans and the integrated CPU mounting block, I can't help but feel that the upgrade potential with this unit is slightly limited. If Intel, for example, comes out with a new platform with different mounting hardware, yeah, I think you're going to be quite limited by carrying this cooler forward. Equally so, if you've got a motherboard with particularly large VRM cooling hardware or something like a mini ITX board, then yeah, you might be left with uh, limited flexibility with this quite chunky block design. So that's something to bear in mind. And in regards to the warranty, three years is, is fine for a sub 100 euro CPU cooler, but it's hardly inspiring, particularly when Arctic, the primary competitor at this price point, offers vastly longer warranty periods on its coolers. So yeah, make what you will of that. Overall, the Endorphi Navis F280 is a highly performant CPU cooler that offers plenty of positives for its 98 euro price tag. The fan speed curves are good, cooling performance is very strong, and I think a lot of people will appreciate the no-nonsense design approach. Factor in the ease of installation, I don't really have any problems giving this unit a positive recommendation, provided you're happy to tune the modestly loud 140mm fans. So yeah, affordable, nice performance. Good job, Salentium PC. I mean Endorphi. I've been Luke Hill for Kicker Group. Thank you for watching our video review of the Endorphi Navis F280 CPU cooler. Let us know what you think in the comment section down below. Bit of a bargain basement beast. Some nice alliteration there, quite proud of that. I was un completely unscripted. Probably going to be snipped out as well in Premiere, but whatever. <laughs> as always, if you like this video, give us a like and subscribe. Really supports the Kicker YouTube channel. Please do check out the written review on the main Kicker website. That supports us massively. Uh, Patreon, Discord, Twitter, interact with us however you can. And check back for more video content like this.